Hey everybody, this is my thoughts on Deathloop. This is a first-person shooter by Arcane Studios and published by Bethesda Softworks that was originally released back in 2021. And the initial state of the game was pretty rough. It had a lot of technical problems and it did not run well on my previous machine at all. In fact, it was pretty much unplayable because it ran so poorly. And unfortunately, that was regardless of what I did to the graphics settings. I have no idea what they did to the optimization in this thing, but it was a disaster on launch. Since then, I've gotten the new PC, and it is considerably more powerful, and for the most part, the game runs at above 100 frames per second at this point. So, at the very least, if you're running a system that is at least as powerful as a Ryzen 9 5900X, an RTX 3080 12GB model, and 64 gigs of RAM, then maybe you'll get acceptable performance out of it. But here's the thing, even with the considerably more powerful hardware, I have still run into weird glitches and performance problems. The most irritating of which was that I was just wandering around doing things in the game and it was sitting at about 100 frames per second and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, with me doing absolutely nothing, with absolutely nothing happening on screen that I could tell, my frame rate just tanked down into the low 30s and occasionally dipping below that, and it just stayed there, and I have no idea why. I mean, it's not like I'm running this thing in 4K or anything. I'm running it at 1080p, and sure, the settings are maxed out, but it still was running at 100 plus frames per second normally, and then all of a sudden down to 30 or less for no discernible reason and just getting stuck there. And restarting the game didn't necessarily fix the issue either, it just had to arbitrarily decide that it wanted to start working properly again out of nowhere, and it was incredibly baffling. So I have absolutely no idea what's going on there, but suffice to say, the game's performance is still an issue. It's just less of an issue than it was on launch for the most part. Thing is, the performance issues were almost exclusively on the PC version. The PlayStation version ran fine, and most reviewers were taking a look at the PlayStation version. So of course, they didn't really give much of a crap about the performance issues, and they were just absolutely showering the game in praise. Which was weird, because for the most part, they haven't done that for Arcane Studios games. So what happened there? Were Arcane just finally getting the praise they deserve, or did something else happen? Well, let me put it this way. I picked up the game, and I started messing around with it, and I just couldn't get past the performance issues. They were driving me up the wall. So I didn't really start delving into the game in earnest until I finally got the new PC, and the performance issues were really no longer severe enough to where I couldn't really play the game. And once I did finally have the ability to play the game at an acceptable frame rate, I quickly found that it's a lot of style and no substance. By that I mean there's plenty of style with the soundtrack, the visuals are pretty good, it's got some interesting visual elements to the environments and such like that, but once you get past the surface level, it is just incredibly deficient as just a first-person shooter in general, but especially as what they were trying to go for here, which is a sort of roguelite element in the sense that it's a time loop game, and as you continue to play the game, you get access to more and more information. You'll be able to retain more equipment and more trinkets, which will enhance your equipment. You'll be able to get access to more special abilities and retain those for subsequent playthroughs and so on and so forth. Now, in theory, that's fine. There are time loop games that have preceded this and have mostly done fine. Games like, say, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. But the way that Deathloop does it completely misunderstands the idea of a time loop game. In a properly done time loop game, time is always moving, so you have a limited amount of time to get things done before the cycle resets and you have to go back and do things again. That's not how Deathloop operates. Deathloop operates on a time slot system, so you have four time slots per day. Morning, noon, afternoon, and evening. At the beginning of each time slot, you are presented with a menu that allows you to view all of the discoveries you've made, all the documents you picked up, etc., and also allows you to modify your loadout, including infusing gear, which allows you to spend residuum, the game's effective currency that you find just scattered around the environments, or absorbed from killing the main bosses of the game, the visionaries, to retain your gear through subsequent loops. This also applies to trinkets, which will give you various passive bonuses either to your character or to the various weapons that you can slot them into, as well as the various slabs that you have access to, which are all of your supernatural powers. Once you've reviewed all your information and sorted out your loadout, then it's time to select a location 
location to go to to explore for that particular time frame. When you show up in that location, then time is standing still until you either end up dying or you end up getting out of that area and making your way back into the tunnels, at which point it will move over to the next time slot and then you can repeat the process. However, if you don't manage to escape into the tunnels and end up dying, then the entire loop resets at the morning time slot and you have to start everything over again, with, of course, whatever you've happened to infuse and whatever discoveries you've made being intact. The thing is, because time stands still once you're out wandering around in a location, there's not really any urgency to do anything. You're not really going in there and trying to complete things within a time limit. You're just leisurely wandering around, eviscerating any foe that gets in your way, and mostly just scouring the area for useful information. This presents a few problems, the first of which is that it is an inherently very repetitive experience. You go into an area, you look for information that might be new or it might not be new, and that means you're just going to be wandering through the exact same areas over and over. You're going to be looking for notes, you're going to be looking for audio logs and finding that the same ones are just sitting there so you're not really finding anything new. You're gonna be fighting the same enemies over and over and over again because every single time you jump into an area, the enemies all respawn, although they might be in different spots than they were before. And the thing is, there's no uniqueness with any of these enemies. You have four enemy types, although that is being extremely generous because the first enemy type is just a dude with a machete. They run up to you, they try to hit you with the machete. That's about it. The second enemy type are enemies that have guns, so they just hang back and shoot at you. The third enemy type is the same as the previous two enemy types, only they have a radio so they can call in reinforcements. And then the fourth enemy type is the visionaries. Those are the only ones that have even the slightest bit of special abilities, and you find out very quickly that they're just as easy to take down as any of the other enemies in the game. So in reality, you actually only have two enemy types, the visionaries and then the basic thugs, and all of them are stupidly easy to take down because they are dumber than a sack of bricks. Oh sure, they might take you down due to sheer volume of fire if there just happened to be enough of them attacking you at once, but healing items and health replenishing stations are common enough to where you're never really going to worry about it. This results in the combat being very repetitive very quickly, and when you combine that with the very repetitive nature of the gameplay in general, I'm sure it's pretty easy to see what the ultimate fatal flaw of this game is. It's that once you get past the novelty value, there's not really anything that's worth experiencing in Death Loop. It's got a very tedious combat loop that's just boring. It's got boring and repetitive exploration where the only thing you're really looking for most of the time are codes that allow you to open locks for safes and boxes and things like that. And so you're just constantly having to wander around areas and find notes and find audio logs and just make sure that they aren't the same ones you've already read, because even if you've already read them, you can still pick them up and read them again. And with there only being four locations to explore, all of which have very minimal changes from one time frame to the next, and you'll just get tired of going through them time and time again, just trying to get that one code you need to be able to get to the next area and ultimately try to break the loop. Because that's the entire storyline of Deathloop. Your name is Colt, you have amnesia starting out, and you find yourself stuck in this time loop. Your job is to break the time loop, and the way you do that is by killing all of the visionaries in one loop. This means that if you knew where you need to go, then Deathloop would actually be a really short game, because in theory you could do that all in the very first loop you go through. Except you can't, because you need to get all of the codes. And you might think to yourself, well, DW, if it's all about getting the codes so you can get into the areas to do what you need to do, then what about just looking up the codes online? Well, they thought ahead there, because they randomized the codes for every playthrough. So, one person playing will have a different set of codes from any other person playing. Because if they didn't do that, there just wouldn't be a game here, because all you would need is to just look up the codes and you could finish the game in maybe an hour or two at most. Instead, the way they've set it up, you're gonna take at least 10 hours or more to have to scour all these areas and get everything to line up, and it ends up being a very tedious, very boring 10 plus hours. So, at the end of the day, I just can't recommend Deathloop at all. It's not that it's a terrible game, it's that it's a really boring game, and frankly, that's worse. 
I have said this many times before, and I'm sure I will say it many times hence, but the absolute worst thing a video game can do is be boring. Because obviously a good game is enjoyable on its own merits. A bad game, however, can still be enjoyed to some degree. At the very least, you might be able to make fun of how bad it is. And at the very least, a bad game is still making you feel something. You might get frustration out of it, but it's something. It's not boredom. If a video game is boring, there is no point to playing it. And that is exactly what happens with Deathloop. So do yourself a favor, if you were sitting on the fence about picking up Deathloop, just don't bother. It is not worth playing. And frankly, that's a real shame, because that means the last two games from Arcane Studios are just not worth playing. And they've gone steadily down in quality. So that leaves me pretty concerned for the future of Arcane Studios in general. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see how that goes with whatever their next project ends up being. So we'll see, I guess. At any rate, thank you all very much for watching. If you like my videos, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. If you can't afford to or don't want to, that is perfectly fine. I understand. But the options there if you're interested. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in later videos.